Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dominic, I'm the host of the Android Factory. In this series, we're gonna explore Compose and see how we can build some pretty common UI elements that you might be familiar with. See here on the right, we have a little bit of a preview of what our final product is. We've gone ahead and deleted all of our work here, so we need to get it back to this state. But basically, as you can tell from the thumbnail and this little picture, we're gonna build out the Slack channel UI kind of idea, right, where there's a bunch of different um, you know, channels, they can either be private or public, you can potentially have a, uh, a certain number of messages, you know, unreads that you need to attend to, or uh, just general unreads in the entire channel. So uh, as we get started here, smash that like button, sit back and relax, and let's explore Compose a bit more. So the first thing I did here was I created a data class here to basically denote what we call a Slack channel. So we have a name, we have some other information here that'll just help us build the UI. So if it's a private channel, if there are new messages, and if there's a tagged message count. So you can kind of see how once we look at a Slack channel and break it down like this, we could probably very easily translate it over to a UI that looks like that. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and just rerun it so we can go ahead and remove that. We don't have anything in our preview anymore, uh, but we can go ahead and focus on our Slack channel UI composable here. So first things first, let's take a look at the is private boolean to determine our you know leftmost icon. So we can just say icon equals if our Slack channel dot is private, then we're going to fetch the filled icon of a lock. Else we are going to say icons dot filled. I believe it's just called tag to make it look like that you know hashtag idea. So next we saw everything laid out horizontally. So we're gonna need a little bit of a row here. Uh, and first, let's go ahead and get an image on here. So our image vector is what we need. It will be our icon and the description, let's just say, I don't know, channel icon. And let's tell this row to fill max width. So we'll go just like that. All right, let's, let's, let's start there. So if we go ahead over here to our composable, the, the preview here, we can create a Slack channel UI where our Slack channel equals, uh, I guess we need a name here. So let's go with, sure, channel one. And by default, the is private is set to false. So let's go ahead and set that to true really quickly. Uh, if we go ahead and rerun things here, we should see a little bit of an icon. Yep, and as we can see there, we have an icon on screen. We obviously need to add in our text here to go ahead and actually get like the name of the channel here. Sorry. So we're gonna go ahead and say Slack channel dot name. And because it's in a row here and it comes after our image, it will appear to the left of, or sorry, to the right of that uh, image icon. And we can see here we have channel one. It doesn't really look all that great. So what we can do inside of our row is we can apply a, uh, an alignment here Sorry, not on the modifier, but instead another option here is going to be our vertical alignment. And what we're going to want to do there is say alignment.center vertically. And so this will go ahead and put all of the items inside of the row here uh, aligned center in the, uh, you know, on the vertical axis inside of our row. So we'll go ahead and see that the channel one should kind of move down. And there we go. Now it is aligned with our lock there. But we could use a little bit of padding here because things are a little close, right? Let's simply put a padding on the root here. We'll say all equals 8dp. And so we got a lot more room here, but then also let's get a little bit of a background color here. And let's just say color equals color dot white. So we can very easily see it. We'll go ahead and just rerun it there. And we should see now just kind of a rectangle that has that information there. Okay. Something worth noting here is we see that the padding is applied first and then our background. And that's because on our modifier here, we call padding and then we call background. So actually, if we go ahead and switch these two in the order in which they're applied, we'll actually have the entire border, you know, the entire area there be white and then all of the content there has the padding, you know, applied to it after the fact. So pretty interesting, can't forget modifiers are uh, applied in an order that they appear in. And in that same vein, we are going to apply a padding here of start, um, let's try a 16 dp, sure. Which we'll just push, push that text over from the left there, it looks a little too close. All right, 16 is a little much, we're gonna go with eight there. Uh, that should be equidistant from what we have uh, you know, to the left of the icon. So that does look pretty good there. Uh, we will leave it as such. 
Now the one thing I'd love to do here is I'd love to actually get this rounded edges here. And so what we're gonna do for that is we're gonna go ahead and cut this out and we're going to apply uh, a surface here. Inside of the surface composable, we can very easily define the shape here and we're going to use the rounded corner shape and we can just very easily apply a rounded cornerness to that surface. So we'll set 8DP, we'll rerun some things and now we see here that those edges get nice and rounded as we would expect. Maybe we'll do 12, I don't know. Yeah, that looks a little too bubbly. So maybe we'll just go with 10 and run with it from there. Okay, so now we have this information. If we go ahead and change is private here to false and rerun things, we should see a separate icon there. And as we see now, we have that public facing icon instead of the private locked one. So uh, let me make use of this display space composable, which just puts a spacer of 8DP and a color of transparent. So let me go ahead and duplicate this and then I'll just say display space. We'll go with channel two and then we'll say is private equals true. And now we'll see in our preview, our single composable preview, we now have multiple, ah, we should have multiple items in here, but we don't because they are just simply, of course, drawing on top of one another. So we will simply cut this out. We will put things inside of a column. We can go ahead and rerun it. And now we will see two elements here or however many we wanna add and there's a tiny bit of separation. Okay, lovely, sorry about that. But now we have a public channel, we now have a private channel, um, and then let's see here, why don't we cover the case where we have uh, unreads, right? So it has new messages inside of the channel. We're gonna go ahead and just apply a different font, you know, styling to the, the channel name there um, as we saw. So let's go with a font weight. We can say if our Slack channel has new messages, we will say font weight bold, else we're going to do a font weight of normal. Very nice. And then on the text here, we do have a simple thing we can change where we can just say font weight equals font weight. Go ahead and just uh, reorganize the code there. And I ran it with uh, nothing that's gonna happen. So let's go ahead and copy and paste some of these. So we're just gonna simply do that, we'll add in a display space, uh, is private, we'll go with false, but then we'll say here, um, has new messages equals true, and then in this case, has new messages equals false, and then we should see inside of our preview, we should see things kind of update. Exactly, so we can now see, uh, I guess we might as well set them both to true. We can now see that the ones that have true have a little bit more of a bold, you know, font weight to them. So it kind of denotes, hey, there's something in that channel that you have not seen before. If you've used Slack, this is a very common way that they kind of denote this. Um, and if you haven't, well, now you'll learn something. On top of it here, we do have a tagged message count. So this is basically like, you know, an immediate notification. So this is, there are new messages in the channel, uh, but they might not be directed at you. But if someone were to at you or at, you know, here or some group you're a part of, you should see a little icon on the right to let you know how many messages that you have here. And the lovely part about it is the way we've designed this here, we have a count of how many messages, you know, you are tagged in, in this channel. So the beauty of compose here is inside of this row, we can quite simply just say, if our Slack channel message count is greater than zero, then we can just easily add in a new composable here. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this. We'll paste it in there. We do not care for the Slack name here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, do that and dot to string. So now that's the actual number on the text. Our modifier will leave the same here as 8dp. And then the font weight here, we're going to kind of delete because we don't need to modify the font weight. Okay, so let's start with this here. Just go ahead and double up some of these, uh, you know, duplicate some of this info here. Okay, so I simply just updated, uh, added in some more of our uh, Slack channel UIs that we care for. And when we rerun things here, we now see that there is text on the right here, you know, that kind of denotes what that uh, you know, how many messages we have there. But obviously that's not what we want. Uh, it's not fully complete here, so we do need to kind of update this. Now on the modifier, we can now run a draw behind option here. And inside of here, we can say draw circle. The circle that we're going to care for here is going to have a color of color.red. 
and the radius here, um, well, let's leave that alone for right now and let's see how that looks. So as we see here, we have a very small dot, right? But there is a circle and it is red. But what we can do here is we can kind of instruct how big this circle should be based upon how big our content is. So inside of our draw scope, which is something that we are inside of, you know, inside of this Lambda with the draw behind, we can very easily just attach maybe, let's see how the width looks uh, of the radius there. And we can see that it's starting to get a little bit better. So maybe we should multiply this by like, I don't know, 1.5F just to make it a little bit bigger, have a little bit better of a look to it. We might need to push it out. Yep, so now it gets a little close to the text. So we can go ahead and maybe let's go with, I don't know, maybe 12 or maybe even 16 DP here, uh, just to move it away a little bit further. And then, yep, we can now see that this kind of looks like we can clearly see, you know, something has changed here, or sorry, so, uh, we have notifications here. We can change out the color here to be color uh, dot white uh, because we do have, you know, a background of white. So it kind of looks better uh, in my opinion with the white number there that we can see. All right, and so that's basically it for this pretty primitive way of uh, taking a look at Slack's UI here. If we just quickly recap, uh, you know, we have a surface here that we, allows us to round the edges, then everything here is really embedded inside of this row. That's all that we have here. Uh, we have a little bit of padding and some vertical alignment along the way to make sure everything's in sync. We obviously have our image that is just very easily, you know, true, false, one or the other. It's either public or private, and therefore we can just quickly calculate what the icon should be. In the event we wanted to support additional icons, there could just very easily be some logic to basically build out this uh, icon. And then, you know, we can just put that in there inside of the image composable. We have a very simple text composable for the, the name of the channel here. And then we just have some very nice, you know, classic compose logic here where we simply add things into the UI if something is present. This is the beauty and power of Compose. We really then care more about our data here and our data really starts to drive the UI. Uh, we can you know, play around with all these different fields and all these different variables, but we have one Composable here that knows how to lay it out in all of the different you know, combinations that we could possibly throw its way. Uh, you know, we have a font weight being calculated you know, on the fly as well. So each one of these, even though they look different, all have the same logic underneath you know, uh, running them. And that's really the power of Compose here. So if you enjoyed this, let me know. Uh, comment down real fan if you made it this far. Please consider subscribing. Smash that like button to help me out. And uh, I'm excited to bring out some more UIs that we're interested in building. If you have any recommendations, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.